In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create scale scores or overall scale score variables in R. So to begin, make sure you have your R Studio program open, then cre create and open a new R script by going to File, New File, R Script, and you should see that you have an R script editor that opens here. Now let's do a quick save as to make sure that we save this R script as something. I'm going to save it just as the generic title test, click Save. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it. Yes, in my case, I do. So again, the topic of this video is creating scale scores in R. Okay. And sometimes I'll use the phrase overall scale scores. And the basic idea of scale scores is that you want to combine a set of variables into a single overarching vari uh, variable that represents those variables. So you could imagine there's different performance dimensions and you want to create an overall performance score for each person. So commonly we would, we would calculate the mean, although sometimes people do the sum. I recommend doing the mean, uh, mainly because if there's missing data, there's gonna be less of an issue. All right, so let's do the initial steps, set the working directory. So the working directory folder I'm working from is my H drive R workshop folder here. And specifically, I'm interested in working with this data file here that's employee survey example, CSV file. You can see comma separated values here. So do a quick copy. And that way we can get the exact name of that data file when we read it in. So th the next thing I'm gonna do is set my working directory here using the setwd function from base R. And my working directory is my H drive R workshop. And then I will run that by doing a control enter because I'm working from Windows and everything was successful. Alternatively, you could go to session, set working directory and choose working directory to do it the alternative way. Okay, so next we're gonna read in the data, that data file in our working directory that I just pointed to. And specifically, we'll want to use, or I will be using, you can use other read functions if you'd like. I'll be using the reader function which is from the tidyverse. And if you haven't, if you'd like to use this particular, uh, rather the read underscore CSV function, which is from the reader package from the tidyverse, if you do plan to use this, make sure that you've recently installed it so it's all up to date using the install.packages function and using the reader package name here in quotation marks as the sole argument. The next thing we wanna do is make sure that we actually access the reader package. I'm not gonna run this because I've recently installed the reader package, but I do need to run this line here where I use the library function with reader as the sole argument to make sure that I have access to it and its functions. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is actually create a new data frame that's based on the data we're about to read in. And so I'm gonna call these serve data, this data frame, and I'll use the left-hand arrow to name the new data frame serve data. You could call it whatever you'd like, and I'll use that read underscore CSV function. And then I will paste, remember I previously copied the exact name of that file we're gonna be working with. And I'll add a .csv to the end because you need that to indicate that it is of .csv comma separated value format. Now let's run that line, take a look at what we have here, and we do have these variables here. So let's go ahead and um, first, we want to assess the internal consistency of these, let's do these three inter turnover intentions items here. So you can imagine maybe the first item is something like, in the next six months, I plan to leave the organization. And then it's strongly disagree to strongly agree, where strongly disagree is equal to one and strongly agree is equal to five. And so we have, so here this would be a three, let's say three is neither disagree nor agree with that statement. So stronger, higher levels of, um, endorsement mean you more strongly agree with the fact that you're likely to leave the company. Now, let's assume that none of these need to be reverse coded here, so we can use them as is. But first, before we determine, uh, before we decide to actually create an overall scale score for turnover intentions, let's assess internal consistency reliability. And there's a whole other tutorial on this with more in-depth information, so I'll just quickly go through this. But we wanna make sure that internal consistency is high enough. And so, um, to warrant actually making an overall scale score. So here is install.packages again. If you have to do this, do this. This Run this line right here. I'm not going to because I've recently installed the psych package, but 
The next line I will run, use the library function with the site package, enter it as the sole argument, click run, so they have access to the site package and its functions. And specifically, I want to access the alpha function from the site package. And that the way that you specify this is enter the name of the data frame that you're gonna be working with, followed by brackets, and then comma, and then C for the combined function here. And then the exact names of the vari or the variables or the items that you wish to assess the internal consistency of. So I believe that the exact names are turn int one, two, and three. So commit that to memory really quickly. And then turn int, make sure you get a capital T and a capital I. Um, R is case and space sensitive here. Okay, so we have the three items there. Okay, so this looks like we successfully wrote the script for this. Let's, there might be an error, but let's go ahead and run it. There's one way to find out. Let's see how this goes. Okay, it worked. All right, so let's look at the output down here for the alpha function. This is Chromebox alpha that we're talking about here, which is an indicator of internal consistency reliability. And generally we're looking for an alpha that's 0.7 or higher, that's deemed to be acceptable. Anything that's 0.6 to 0.7 would be kind of questionable. Anything below 6.6 6 is definitely gonna be problematic. One would be the ideal, 1.00. That would be excellent internal consistency reliability. So we see that the raw alpha here, it's 0.83, the standard alpha, standardized alpha is the same, 0.83. This is actually in the good range, so it's definitely acceptable. So by itself, we could say, yeah, this looks pretty good. Now let's check down at this table, reliability if an item is dropped. And so if we to interpret this, if we were to drop the first turnover intentions item, we'd actually see a drop in our internal consistency. Our alpha would drop from 0.83 to 0.75. If we were to drop the second item but retain all the other items, we'd also see a drop, this time to 0.73. And if we were to drop the third item, um, we would actually, and keep the other two items, we'd actually see internal consistency reliability stay about the same. So you definitely wanna revisit these items, and this is just a general good practice to see, do all three of these seem to be tapping into our conceptual definition of turnover intention? Um, and if not, in particular, if this is maybe a strange item, then you might wanna question whether or not you wanna include it in the scale score. But in this case, this is probably telling us that it's probably just measuring something slightly different about turnover intentions. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep all three items. So now we're ready to create, I'll put in parentheses here, overall scale score for turnover intentions. So the first thing we need to do is think of a clever name for it. And so let's be sure to first say that we wanna add this variable to this the existing data frame by using survey and followed by the dollar signs. So we're gonna attach this new variable to this existing data frame. And I'm going to call this, uh, let's say overall turn int. So overall underscore turn int, turnover intentions. This is going to represent turnover intentions for us, okay? When we create the overall scale score. So to create the overall scale score, there's different ways we could do this. You could use the mutate function from dplyr. Uh, I'm gonna use a function from base R that's pretty easy to use, especially since we've just written the alpha script, which we can actually borrow parts of it to write it. It's called the row means function. And similarly, there's a row sums function. Just note that the M in means is capitalized. So as the first argument, we're actually just going to borrow this whole chunk right here from um, from our alpha function. So just get everything between the parentheses here and we'll copy that and we'll paste here, okay? And now the next thing that we want to do is right in here after the bracket, we wanna add in an additional argument. I'm actually gonna do a return here, put it on the next line so it's a little bit easier to read and we don't go over the the horizontal space limitations there. And so we're gonna actually put na.rm equals true here. And what this is doing is saying that if anybody who are calculating their over their row mean for, for these three items, if they're missing on one or two of these, of the three uh, items here, then we're actually going to use whatever available data we have. So let's say they don't have, they didn't respond to turn at one or turn at two, but they did respond to turn at three. Well, that becomes their mean here. Um, or if you, they responded to turn at one and turn at three, but not turn at two, we calculate the mean based on turn at one and turn at three. Okay. 
And so now we've written this. And so again, we just borrowed from that alpha function there. And these are the three items that we're going to use to create the overall scale score. So let's go ahead and highlight both of these lines so we can run the complete function there. And now let's take a look at our data frame here. We should notice at the very end, yes, we have our turnover intentions, overall turnover intentions variable created here. So you can eyeball this and see that indeed this person had three, three, three for turn it one through turn it three. And so indeed their average score is that. And let's check through here and see if any of these had missing data so we can see how that operated. It doesn't look like any of them do. So we have complete data. Oh, no, down here at the bottom, we do have these NAs. And so you'll see that actually there isn't, you get NAN here because there weren't data available at all to even compute a mean for these people because they didn't respond to any of the turnover intentions items. Okay. All right. So that's how you create an overall scale score variable. You would repeat this by going through other sets of scale items and so forth. The idea is that you want to first establish that you're assembling things that are like enough or related enough to justify creating an overall scale score. And using internal consistency reliability and specifically Chromebox Alpha can be one way to justify that. Thank you very much.